Hey everybody, this is Jeremy Dunham, Editor-in-Chief of the IGN PlayStation team. And it's here. We finally got them, our retail units of the PlayStation 3. We got the test units last week, but up until this point, we never knew what actually came in the consumer box. So as a special treat for you guys, we decided to open this system up for the first time. No one's ever touched it until now, so that we experience the same thing you'll experience when you open up the system on November 17th. So, let's get to it. I'm not going to show you how to open the box, because if you don't know how to open the box, then you're probably not watching this show. So, in the inside, one thing to remember is that the PlayStation 3 is almost 11 pounds on its own, so it's a very heavy system, so make sure you're very careful uh, when removing the system, you don't drop it on a toddler or an elderly uncle or something. But the very first thing you're going to see is the six-axis controller. And let me just take this out of the bag here so you can actually see it. This is the new controller that uh, isn't the boomerang that a lot of people are actually very excited to see. Very lightweight. We have a couple of these in the office. It's good to have one more. And the very next thing in the package, an Ethernet cable. The Ethernet cable is very necessary if you want to connect to the PlayStation Network. And if you, if you plan on playing online games, this is definitely something you're going to want to use. So don't lose this. And the next thing we have to reach way down there to get, it's the cable that will charge the controller. You, need to, you can plug this into a PC or your PlayStation 3, and it will charge up the controller, just as your Xbox 360 controller does now. It lasts about 30 hours, too, so it's pretty handy. Then there's one final cable all the way down there, which requires another reach down, if I don't get stuck. And that is the composite cable, which has actually been a point of contention for a lot of people because it's not an HD cable. If you do get the system, you're going to have to get the HD cable separately. But the good news is, if you already have a PlayStation 2 HD cable at home, a component cable, for instance, uses the same connectors, you can plug it right in, won't have to rearrange everything. If you don't, you have to buy it separately. And now for the beast itself, which is uh, quite a task. I want to make sure I don't drop it on an elderly uncle. Best thing to do is take this out, which conceals the hidden plug, which is pretty much a standard PC plug. It's very similar looks uh, at the end, as you can see, very similar to what you'd have on uh, your home PC. So if you want a spare, you can pretty much just go get one at any Radio Shack. And here we go. I should have hired a construction crew. Here we go. And as a, as a big bag of goodies falls out, I'm going to go ahead and move the box to the side. And here's the system itself in its protective casing. This is exactly pretty much how it was in the test unit when we got it. And this is the 60 gig model, not the 20 gig model. The difference, of course, the 20 gig doesn't have the chrome and, uh, well, you know the rest. And so here it is, our PlayStation 3 retail unit out of the box for the very first time. You can see it's actually not with fingerprints yet, but it, because of its gloss finish, it gets them pretty fast. Uh, so enjoy that while you can. And the last final thing that we have here are a couple of booklets, instructions, things of that nature. But the big thing that everyone's been waiting for, the free copy of Ricky Bobby on Blu-ray that comes with every PlayStation 3. And it actually comes out before it hits the regular retail stores on its own, so it's kind of a bonus. Okay, now that we have the system plugged in, we can actually turn it on and use it. But there's one last step we have to do, and that's to make sure we flip this switch right here, just like on the PlayStation 2. That way we know for a fact that the system's on, and we'll know that it's on by the red light here on the front. So now we're all ready to go. The last thing we have to do is actually have a controller, so if we play a game, we can actually use it. But since this controller was in the box, it's not charged yet. To do that, we use the cable that I grabbed earlier, right here, and we plug this in the top, which, with a little finagling, will go in, just like so. And then the other controller end goes in one of the USB ports located up front. Just plug that right in there from this angle. <clears throat> and now once the power has begun, it will start charging. But because we haven't actually turned the system on properly yet, it won't do it just yet. You can also plug it into a PC if you want. All right, so now we're all ready to go. We've got our controller plugged in, the system's plugged in, we can actually play some games. But first, we need to turn the system on. To do that, we've got touch-sensitive buttons. It's not heat-sensitive like a lot of people thought it was. Still, pretty cool to be touch-sensitive. You have both eject and power. So to do that, we're just going to go ahead and hold the power down. And this is the screen you'll see for the first time when it boots up. Now, you might have noticed that when we booted up, the television actually said it was running in 480. And that's because you haven't set the PlayStation 3 
to run at a higher resolution yet. So by default, so that it can work on all televisions, it starts at 480. Now, of course, here you see that even though we have a controller plugged in, it says that we need a controller plugged in, otherwise we won't be able to play. To, to let it know that you're actually ready to go, you hold down the PlayStation button, select which language you want to do, which is English, because I don't speak any of those other ones. An available HDMI device was detected. Do you want to output video using HDMI? Yes, we do. So we just go and choose that. And now as it reboots itself, do we want to switch to optimal settings? Of course we do. Optimal is always better than not optimal. So we'll go ahead and select that. It's ready to go. Now it's in 720p, ready to go. Automatically figured out what the television can run in. So we go ahead and we accept it. We choose our time, which we're here in San Francisco, so we're going to go ahead and choose Pacific time. And then today's date, which is November the 10th. So let's put that in. And there we go. There's our settings. It tells us our current time and everything we just did. So we go ahead and enter. And now here's the PlayStation 3. There it was. It was tuning up the band. And then when you first turn on the system, we've covered this before in some of our direct feed videos that you might have seen on IGN Weekly previously. So you have plenty of options. You go straight to the sign-in for the PlayStation Network. You can cycle through other things, your network settings, your save data utility. This is where you keep your saves and other such things. Video for what else? Videos. Music, photo. This is where you can adjust all your settings. And of course, you can alter users. You can add as many as you want. And you can change the name of this one, change the icon, the whole deal. We've already covered that before, though, so let's get down to what people really want to see, and that's a game in the PlayStation 3 and how it boots up. So in preparation for that, we, will, we have Resistance, a retail copy of this, Fall of Man, which I'm actually reviewing later today, so be on the lookout for that. And it's actually a front-loading tray, so it's going to work just like the Wii has, if you've seen the videos of that. You just pop it in, like so, and it goes ahead and accepts it right off the bat. Now, it's not going to auto-boot when you put it in, because it actually wants to give you the opportunity to start the game on your own. So we're going to go over here to our game section, and there you can see a disk right underneath the folder. We go ahead and select it. We'll leave it there. shows you the wallpaper. And then you hit X, and now it's saying we need to update our system. So as you can see, right out of the box, you already have to update the PlayStation 3 software. But we're not going to do that yet, because the, honestly, we're still running a couple of tests, 1.0 versus version 1.02. Um, so, but if you do want to see Resistance, tune back later today because I'm actually reviewing the game. We'll have a full video review. You can check it out for yourself. And otherwise, uh, that's it for this time. Look for more coverage on the PlayStation 3 and us getting the retail units and plenty more through today and the rest of the week.